Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I wanted to make a video just kind of going through how you can create a very simple machine learning model with Airflow. Um, and I wanted to just make it really easy to understand because ML at its most basic level is super easy. And the smaller your models are, the more likely and like tailored towards a specific objective, the more likely they are to actually be accurate. Um, instead of some, you know, Matt, everyone gets hotter on LLMs, but massive ML models are not super accurate for, you know, the type of use cases like internal analytics or uh, predictions that you might be thinking of. Um, and so what we'll do today is I'll show you how you can, you know, build a basic uh, ML workflow. In this case, I'm going to use Snowpark just because uh, Snowpark is a way for you to just run Python code within Snowflake. Um, and this is the advantage of, you know, hey, I can just run the Python code on the data within Snowflake without need to bring it out. But all of this, you could just run using Python um, on any other kind of database. It's not like restricted at all. Um, you could just, instead of using Snowpark, use uh, local Airflow Python um, to perform the operations or any other kind of like, you know, hosted environment, maybe a Kubernetes pod operator, whatever. Um, but just wanted to kind of call that out. So even though you might see Snowpark, you'll see even the implementation, all you're doing is adding a tag to a Python decorated task. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to load some data in. We're going to transform it. We are then going to use feature engineering, which is basically just saying, hey, I want to predict Y variable and X variables are the columns that I want you to use to try and generate those predictions. Then we're going to bring in a model um, from the Snowflake model registry, in this case, a random forest classifier. So basically just trying to develop, establish model does is just establish links between different data points to see if there's any correlations or relationships. Um, so saying, you know, hey, if all these types, and so in this case, we're doing it based on dog intelligence. So if all these dogs are linked to having, you know, low intelligence, then, you know, every time you see that dog, maybe predict it's going to have low intelligence. Um, that's a very simple example. And that's what I want to do is show you how simple ML can be. Um, then we're going to, and so where we're actually going to generate those predictions is by training the classifier. So using that feature engineer data, using the random forest model we're going to bring in, split our data into testing and training, and then uh, train our model on the training data, test it on the testing data, as you might have guessed. Um, so now I'll kick it over to my VS Code environment and kind of show you what this looks like in the local UI, or in my local VS Code environment, sorry. So here I have, and I'll toss a link to this below, the GitHub. Um, but basically, this is a uh, setup using the Astro CLI local Docker image that is uh, basically using connection to Snowpark, creating a Python 3.8 environment to connect to Snowpark because that's what Snowpark requires. Um, we're also bringing in Scikit-Learn, Pandas, uh, Snowflake ML for Python. And then we also have to bring in our also requirements for uh, Snowpark. So if you're just executing your Python locally, just add these to your uh, local requirements file. And then what we'll do um, over here, if we go into, well, you can start building our DAG. Um, so go in this example file and I'll start building it out for you. So the first thing you'll need to do here is obviously import all of your uh, good old packages. So we're gonna import the uh, DAG, task, task group de decorators, the Astro SDK to just make some of these functions uh, easier to actually do. Um, Astro files, tables to, just make it easier to interact with uh, data tables and files just kind of as an object and pass them between tasks. Uh, import OS, so we can read system level OS messages and then also Snowpark uh, table so that we can recognize the Snowpark object of a Snowpark table. Um, and you know, obviously if you're not using Snowpark, don't need that. Um, then we'll also define the database values where we're actually gonna be executing. Um, so this is so we can just dynamically insert them into our code to say, hey, run these commands on our existing Snowflake data. Then what we'll do is create a DAG. So here we will just call these uh, Snowpark model basic, uh, bring in the demo database schema. Um, and so you'll need to actually have, so in this example, I added all my Snowflake connection details, my environment file. You could also just add all your Snowflake connection details via the UI, just make sure they're accessible and also, you know, reference your database and schema using these variables. Um, and you'll see why that's relevant in a second, because we're going to then use these to connect to Snowflake. So whether you're adding your connections to the environment file or to the UI, you will want to reference them as Snowflake defaults. Just make sure you add them as Snowflake default um, or don't use this 
uh, method of, of it, <laughs> initializing it, then what we'll need to do is actually load a file. So in this example, and can you for following along the repo, go to the data, you can see this roses raw. So I forgot, we're not doing dog intelligence, we're doing roses. Um, so we were doing dog intelligence previously. Here we are taking the different information about roses and using it to predict what type of rose it is. You can see damask roses, tea, moss, all these different types of roses, super fun stuff. So we're gonna load that file from just our local file. So, you know, this would be probably coming from another database, wherever, bringing it into Snowflake or wherever you're doing these transformations. Um, and then just reading in the database schema, um, connection ID for Snowflake saying replace if it exists already. So imagine we're running this over and over, we're just gonna to wanna to replace it, or we could add setup teardown task to delete that previous uh, table. Then after we're done with that, what we need to do next is transform that table. So here we are going to uh, take that table we loaded into Snowflake, uh, and we are going to uh, say, hey, we only wanna look at uh, roses that have a leaf size greater than two centimeters. Uh, you know, that's a really, and it's less than two centimeters, it just predicts it too easily. So we wanna make it a little bit harder for ourselves. Um, then once we're done with that, what we'll do is create a Snowpark virtual environment. Again, this is where if you're using interacting with the data locally, you would just have to read it in from a Python function and then uh, just process it uh, on your local machine. So here, let me actually scale the terminal down so we don't have any uh, or that. So here within the uh, Snowpark virtual environment, what we are doing is just bringing in pandas, scikit-learn, so creating a virtual environment with these, uh, with this connection and with these libraries. Then we're importing uh, some packages from scikit-learn, importing pandas. You can see that there, the train test split just makes it easier to split our data. Um, and then the standard scaler just to standardize all of our features. Um, and that's just kind of regular, like making all of your data relatively of the same ratio, like uh, distance away from each other so you don't have massive outliers. So here we're taking that raw table that we're reading in uh, from Snowpar or Snowflake, converting uh, column names to string for the scalers because it requires that. Then we are uh, getting dummy variables, dropping uh, blooming month, uh, dropping rose type and index because our predictive value is going to, for our X value, this is gonna be our data set that's just um, used to predict our Y value. So then we have our Y value here which is our rose type. So we're trying to use this X data set to predict our rose type. So we can have a rose type in there or it'll make it too easy. Then we're gonna use the train test split. Um, we're gonna have our X data set, Y data set, uh, test size, random state, and basically this is going to output values um, of our training data set, test data set for X and Y based on this ratio. So 20% uh, test data, 80% training. So you're always gonna to wanna to have a lot more training data than test data. Then we're gonna initialize a standard scalar, use it to transform our training data um, to a standard index. Similarly, do the same for our testing data for our X values. Then we are going to uh, concatenate. So which case we are going to then add the Y training data back to the training data set for X training scaled. Uh, our Y values, add the axis on one, same thing for our testing data, um, because then we're going to split that again when we're actually doing the model training. So then once we're done with that, we will, uh, you saw we have our parallel task, which is going to run as we ingest our data to actually uh, create a model registry. So to use Snowflake models, you have to create a local model registry if one doesn't already exist. And so you can kind of think of this as like a model database within Snowpark that's going to store any models. So you need this to, you need to initialize a model registry session and then register any models you create to it. So what we'll do is create that model registry and then we can pull from it in our uh, next task, which is gonna be actually training the classifier um, to use those models as uh, to train our, our on our data. Yeah, sorry, I kind of got all funny there. Um, but yeah, that's basically what we're gonna do is just use this model registry for exactly what it sounds like, pulling a model. Um, in this case, we're actually gonna use a Snowflake provided model. Um, which is essentially a wrapper around uh, sklearn. So if you're used to sklearn, you can basically think of them as the same, but they're more easily accessible within Snowpark. Um, and so here we have another Snowpark virtual environment, this time with scikit-learn and the Snowflake provider. So here we're bringing in the Snowflake model registry, random forest classifier, uh, UUID is just to make unique identifiers for our model uh, based on their date time. Then we're gonna import pipelines. So this is just 
the way you run data through a model pipeline, Snowflake, um, and then accuracy score and confusion matrix just so we can print those out to get some idea of how our model performed. Then reading in our training data, so training data uh, was stored in table zero, uh, test data was stored in table one. Sorry for the angelic effect right now, it's really sunny in my apartment. Then we have our feature columns. So these are all the data, set, uh, data points we're gonna use to predict this label column, which is rows type. Then we have our pipeline. So this pipeline is basically just defining the steps that our model is going to go through. So here, all we're doing is just training a random forest classifier. So we're just initializing a random forest classifier, bringing in our feature columns, uh, bringing in our label columns. Uh, so basically it's telling us to look for these feature columns. This is the label column. Um, the N estimators or in random state are basically just parameters of how many times they want to make this estimations and uh, between the different data points in the random forest. So I don't worry too much about that. Uh, these are just basically ways you can tweak your model for accuracy, but they aren't super important. And random state is just kind of like a random seed. So I've gone over this before, but if you've ever played a video game or done anything or it's, you know, you have a random seed, it's a way for you to reference a certain random state. So imagine like each random seed corresponds to a dice roll. You can get those roll of the dice um, and always reference it. But you know, each random state is a new random uh, option. And I know I said, don't worry about the details. I went super into the details there, but I just thought that was important. And the only use of this is really just to switch it around to see which ones are most effective for getting a more accurate model. Then after that, we will uh, fit our training data to that pipeline we initialized. Uh, register it to our, our bring, initialize our model registry, then log our model to the log model registry. And then here we're going to use that model to actually test it on the test data to predict, generate some predictions. And then what we'll use is create a data frame based out of the results of those predictions. And then after that, we will uh, generate the accuracy source. So pull it from that data frame, add it as accuracy, same thing for a confusion matrix. These are just basically uh, references to how accurate the data set or the ML predictions were, then print them in the log. So we're just gonna look quickly at them, uh, look at them in the log to see uh, how accurate our model was. And we also have a return our model predict data sets, so our full data set um, of the model predictions. Now, the last things we need to do here after we've done all that fun stuff is actually just uh, initialize this uh, uh, task. So define it by passing in the feature engineering within data sets. This is four different nested tasks. Instead of having bit mapping, we are saying, hey, load the file, transform it, pass that into the feature, engin uh, feature engineering task, then use that to train the, uh, pass that all in the train class farm task along with the demo database and demo schema. So just demo demo, and that'll create it as a task model trained um, output. And then we also have correspondingly the create model registry. And then this is where we'll actually just need to set bit mapping because this is going parallel rather than in, uh, linearly. And then we're just initializing the DAG at the end. So built out all our code. So now we'll switch back to the Airflow UI. We can take a look at it. So here, if we want to look at some of the details here um, in the run state, we can I was going to show you, yeah, more details. Here we go. Um, we have here under the load file, you can see it bringing in our input file um, and then passing out, you know, the outlet reference to where that file is now going to exist in Snowflake. Then the transform table, just look at the logs. Uh, I don't know why I'm saying can't read the logs, I guess because I've rebooted this. But here you can see XCOM templates. So it's reading in one data set, outputting the transform data set. Um, and you can see the render template here. So the OC uh, arguments we're using, any task instance details as well. Then, once we do feature engineering within Snowflark, um, let's try and refresh this. Oh, that's really annoying. So here, again, we will see, if I go into XCOMs, just a return value. And I'll go over Snowflake in a second to show you all this as well. Um, so just feature engineer data set, create that model registry. Um, so you can see here, just pulling in the model registry, not really anything fancy here. Um, and then using it all to train the classifier. So now I'm just going to run it again real quick just so yeah, I can show you guys the results of train classifier because it is pretty cool. So here, and this is, I'm going to just move my green screen back so you don't get a shadow. You can see we have our accuracy rating, so 77%, not production grade. So I'll have to go back and do some tweaking to the model. Uh, then we have our confusion matrix. And so basically what this is is saying, hey, uh, for the three different rows types, uh, 
first imagine this was type A, predicted it right 46 times, missed it seven times, uh, and predicted or mixed it, missed it 14 times, predicted the other rows incorrectly um, here and here. And then you can see the same thing down here. It got it right 44 times, predicted the other rows is incorrectly for these values uh, for nine times for this one. Um, and then down here you have 49, 6, and 12. So it predicted the correct values 49 times, but also wrongly predicted it to be 6 and 12 when it would have been uh, the third value of rows. So a little, it takes a little bit to wrap your head around, but please go check this out. Um, I'll have the GitHub links in the description. Just a good way to introduce yourself to ML. And then once you're ready, you have the super complex ML DAG uh, within here as well. So if you want to go crazy, you can see this is a real LLM uh, training DAG. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it inspired you to uh, do some ML with yourself and uh, have a good one. Daddy guy out.